Hello, I am Emma Dixon and I am a junior at the University of Wyoming. Beginning my freshman year, when I expressed interest in international research, I have been studying human-elephant conflict with Dr. Ramesh Sivanpele. This presentation will serve as an overview to what I am researching and will be supplemented by either remote sensing or interview data analysis next year. Human-elephant conflict refers to the negative interactions between elephants and humans. These interactions can result in property damage, injury, and death to both parties. In India, the origin of this conflict stems from a large population of Asian elephants, around 27 to 29,000, having to coexist with a growing human population. Despite the sharp increase in population, Indians are improving their standard of living and food access. This puts a strain on available land and resources, worsening human-elephant conflict. It has now been estimated that 400 human deaths and 100 elephant deaths occur each year throughout India. Besides the fatalities, financial loss from crop raiding and infrastructure damage impacts an additional 500,000 people each year. As a result, communities who experience higher rates of human-elephant conflict are frequently less likely to support elephant conservation measures. This makes researching the factors, patterns, and results of conflict an important topic both for elephant conservation and human safety. When researching a topic of this breadth, it can help to focus on a specific geographic area, and so my focus turned to human-elephant conflict within the Coimbatore Forest Division. This area is located within the southern Indian state of Tamil Nadu, near the Western Ghats. It is an ideal location to study because it contains large elephant populations, viable elephant habitats, and multiple elephant corridors. In Coimbatore, a vast open area between the forested mountains and human settlements served as a buffer between elephants and humans. But now, human settlements have expanded into this open area in the forests. This coming year, I will look into the remotely sensed data of this geographic area in order to quantify how cities have expanded. This expansion into elephant habitat, or buffer area within Coimbatore, is important to study, as it has resulted in deforestation and the removal of vegetation that serves as a valuable food source for the elephants. It is a difficult situation, as people in this state want to develop the land to produce enough food, while the elephants need the food and water sources that existed in the undeveloped forest. Since there is now much less undeveloped land to serve as viable elephant habitat, Elephants are exploring alternate food sources. A very desirable food source for the elephants that they are resorting to are the cash crops grown by humans. These crops include tender coconut, bamboo, banana, jackfruit, mango, and corn. Elephants are capable of great damage, as they have the ability to access even tall trees. So, for example, with coconut trees, they put their feet up onto the trunk and use their weight to push it over. Once the tree is down, they can access and eat the tender new leaves and growth at the top. Other times, human-elephant conflict will occur when elephants that are seeking water or trying to follow migration routes will happen across crops and opportunistically raid them. Crops are rich in nutrients and have been linked to a potential reproductive advantage that comes with a larger body size resultant from consuming nutrient-rich crops. Natural causes can also be factors as droughts put humans and elephants in competition with each other. Drought decreases native elephant food sources, which can lead them to raid the irrigated crops from local farms. And since crops require water, farmers commonly have tanks or water pipes on their property that elephants can smell. Elephants searching for these water tanks are then brought close to the nutritionally dense crops, which may result in a crop raid. In Coimbatore, Ramesh and I spoke to a variety of people who have experienced the conflict, including farmers, landowners, drivers, rural villagers, and others. While some had sympathy for the elephant and believed that the fault lies with the humans for encroaching onto land that was once used by Asian elephants, others viewed it as a blessing to have their crop fields or homes visited by an elephant. Another section of the populace is frustrated, wishing that the elephants could be removed and that farmers had other options, such as guns, to use when driving the elephants away. This myriad of different views can partially be traced back through history. Throughout history and into the present day, elephants have been used in logging operations, the tourism industry, temple processions, circus shows, as war elephants, and as status symbols for the wealthy. 
The elephant also holds a spiritual role, and in Hinduism, the elephant is viewed as the physical representation of Ganesh. Ganesh is the elephant-faced god who is called the Lord of Beginnings, Lord of Good Fortune, and Remover of Obstacles. Because of its religious and cultural significance, along with the threat to elephant populations due to poaching, the Indian government listed them under Schedule I of the Wildlife Protection Act in 1977. This affords them the highest level of protection possible. After the Wildlife Protection Act, other conservation measures followed. In 1978, the export and import of the Asian elephant and its ivory became illegal, and in 1986, the Asian elephant was listed as endangered due to the significant decrease in Asian elephant ranging area. These acts make it punishable by steep fines and or prison time for any person found guilty of hunting, changing park or sanctuary boundaries, and selling or possessing trophies from elephants, unless otherwise granted permission by the chief wildlife warden. The caveat to this is that if an elephant has been caught repeatedly raiding crops or disturbing populated areas, it may be relocated to a different area or put into captivity. The government of India also provides compensation for individuals impacted by human-elephant conflict, whether that impact is death, injury, crop damage, or infrastructure damage. However, the entire compensation process takes time, and the amount is not proportional to the loss which impacts the rebuilding process. To prevent potential crop raids by elephants, farmers use a variety of methods to prevent elephants from coming close to their crops. Beehive fences, recordings of animal growls, loud sounds from fireworks, fences, chili powder, trenches, and watchtowers are all different methods that have been employed with varying levels of success. Some private farms, schools, factories, and governmental organizations are putting up electric fences in order to protect their property. While this can protect these organizations for some time, they can worsen the cases of human-elephant conflict along their boundaries. The electric fences and trenches can be rather expensive, so the government can help fund these pre preventative measures, especially if they are to be placed by roads and train tracks, as they are common vehicle-elephant collision spots. Unfortunately, a lack of maintenance can render these two widely used techniques ineffective, and regardless, fences and trenches can worsen the habitat fragmentation of elephants, making human-elephant conflict in other locations more likely. In summary, the origin of human-elephant conflict has stemmed from the overlapping need for space, food, and water between humans and elephants. It is then exacerbated by the frustration and fear caused by the resultant economic damage which makes humans less favorable for elephant conservation measures. This issue has become more severe over the past decades, as both human and elephant populations have grown, creating greater stress between the two species. With many of the current solutions aimed at providing short-term mitigation measures to the conflict, they have a limited impact. Stakeholders should address the root cause of this issue, for example, opening migration corridors and ensuring that there are adequate food and water sources for elephants. In other words, an interdisciplinary solution model is needed that will identify the hotspots of human-elephant resource competition and work to prevent the competition through alternative resource access and land management. Fences, trenches, loud sounds, and other barriers may decrease the number of elephant raids, but it does not decrease the number of elephants being driven out of the forest due to a variety of reasons, such as a lack of food, water, space, or new pests. The long-term solution will lie in a combination of preventative measures that address the cause of the conflict, whether it be decreased habitat, habitat degradation, or lack of water, and traditional tactics like barriers and fireworks. And even when all solutions have been explored and nothing can be done to decrease the resource competition between wildlife and humans, landowners can explore other options. In this case, the farmer might decide to change their crops to one less favored by elephants, making their farm a less attractive option for crop raiding. At its core, human-wildlife conflict is an ever-shifting interdisciplinary issue. While it is a complicated issue that requires policy changes, scientific research, and cooperation from landowners, it is a rewarding issue that can help ensure the longevity of a species and livelihood of a local landowner. Uh, just wanted to say many thanks to the Wyoming Research Scholars Program and Rita University for hosting us, and to the Dick Cheney Fund for all of their support. Traveling to India gave me an appreciation for the multi-dimensional aspects of environmental issues, which is a very important concept for me to understand, 
as I am pursuing a degree in environmental system science and outdoor recreation and tourism management. In both of these fields, it is vital to understand all of the different viewpoints in order to conceptualize the issue, like in India, so I am so grateful for getting to take on this experience.